All right. So that's fantastic. We can find mu of x bar. We know mu of x bar equals mu and sigma of x bar now equals sigma over the square root of n. And that's amazing information for us. Awesome. But what can that do with anything? All right. So basically, now we have, if we have a large enough sample size, then what we can do is find the probability no matter if our population isn't normally distributed. So that's pretty powerful. We can manipulate data so that it's not going to be an issue if it's not normal. So let's get to it. Suppose an elevator has a maximum capacity of 16 passengers with a total weight of 2,500 pounds. Assuming a worst case scenario in which the passengers are all male. Oh no, men! What are the chances the elevator is overloaded? I'm, ju I'm just kidding. Um, I, I, I like men. I, I like females too. Like They're all good. I just think it's funny because it says worst case scenario, men. Ah. Okay, anyway, assume male weights follow a normal distribution. All right, so we're at case one. It's a normal distribution. Has a mean of 182.9. We're talking about all men. So that's our mu and it has um, a standard deviation of 40.8. So that's our standard deviation, 40.8. We want to first find the probability that one randomly selected male has a weight greater than 156.25. So the probability that X, one man, is greater than 156.25. So this is just a kind of reminder of what we've been doing up to this point to find probability. I'm going to keep that this time. Um, we go to stat crunch, right? We go to stat and we go to calculators and then we go to normal. So this is exactly what we've been doing up to this point. So now I just have to go back and say, what was it? 182.9 was our mean. Our standard deviation is 40.8. 40.8. And we're looking for the probability that it's greater than 156.25. So X is greater than 156.25. So hopefully I got all those numbers in correctly and I see my probability is 0.7432. So about 74% of men, one man, right? The chances are that um, he'd weigh more than 156.25 pounds. So if we look at that, that's exactly what this is and notice how spread out it is. And there's a lot of, you know, area. Okay, now we want to find the probability that a sample of 16 males have a mean weight greater than 156.25 pounds. So notice there's a difference. Like I'm going to go back so we can see both of them. This we're looking at one random man. Now we're looking at a sample of 16 males. This we're just saying find the probability that this happens. Now we're finding the probability that the mean weight is going to be greater than 156.25 pounds. So we're looking for x bar is greater than 156.25. So the mean, the sample mean, well now we're not talking about this population anymore. We're talking about if we have a whole bunch of 16 men and they randomly get on an elevator, we want to know if their mean weight's greater than 156.25 pounds because that means, hello, their total weight's going to be more than 2,500 pounds. So now we're looking at mu of x bar, and we know mu of x bar is going to be the same as mu, but sigma of x bar is going to change, right? That's sigma over the square root of n, and that's 40.8 divided by, in this case, the sample size is 16, which is 4, which we have 10.2. So when we go to stat crunch then, now I'm going to change this to 10.2, right? 10.2. The mean stays the same, and we're still trying to find if the x bar is greater than 156.25. So only thing that changes is that standard deviation. Click compute, and oh my word, it is 0.9955 chance that if 16 men get on, on the elevator, their mean weight will be greater than 156.25 pounds, which would indicate, ladies and gentlemen, that it would be over the weight limit. Now, some things that you need to consider about your professor. One, I'm terrified of enclosed places. I have a little bit of claustrophobia. Two, people scare me. That's why I teach online. Um, 
So you put those two things together. I'm just kidding. I like people. Um, but if I am very claustrophobic, and especially when I'm in closed places with lots of people, that freaks me out because they're stealing my air. So what would I do if that happened? I would get off the elevator. It's almost 100% chance that it's going to be over. Okay, so let's keep going. <laughs> The heights of kindergarten children are approximately normally distributed. Yay, normal distribution with a mean of 39. So again, we're talking about the entire population. So that's mu is 39. Standard deviation is two. So our population, again, are those kindergarten children. Children. And the variable of interest, what about those ki kindergarten children have 39 and two? Well, it's the inches. That is their height. They're, right? Yes, the height, that's what it says, the heights of kindergarten children. So population is our kindergarten children, variable of interest is our height. If an individual kindergarten child is selected at random, what is the probability that he or she, so X, is between 38 and 40? So, so 38 and 40, so we're going in between. All right, so 39, 2. I'm going to have to go back. I, I, I never can remember these things. My mind just doesn't work. All right, so we're going to go to between because this time we're do, looking at between. We're finding the probability. And I think this is it. I'm going to look back to make sure. So 39 and 2. See, I'm just not very good with the numbers in my head. I have to write everything down. And we are looking for the probability that they're between 38 and 40. So 38 and then 40. And so we know that 39 is going to be right in between those two. So let's see what happens. Yeah, there it is. So it's right in between. And that would be about 0.3829. So a 38% um, chance to select one child that would be between 38 and 40. Fantastic. So now what if we have a classroom of 30 of those children? And we want to know the probability that the class mean is between 38 and 40. So we have... 30 kids and we want to know if the their average weight is between 38 and 40. So now again we've got to figure out mu of x bar and sigma of x bar because we're trying to find the probability of x bar being between 38 and 40. Right that's what we're looking for the probability that they're mean so that's going to be your key word you're looking for. Anytime you see the probability of the mean you got to find this. All right, so remember, we have to have a normal distribution or a sample size greater than 30. Notice we are, have both. We have a normal distribution and 30 kids. So our mu of x bar is going to be our mu, which we said was 39. Our standard deviation is 2 divided by how many kids we have, the square root of, in this case, 30. So I do that 2 divided by the square root of 30, and I'm going to do that all at one time on my fancy calculator. And I get 0 0.3651, and I always want to round that to four decimal places if I need to. That way I can make sure that I don't get too much of a round off error when I put that into StatCrunch to get my probability. So here we go. Back to StatCrunch. Let's discard these. All right, here we go. So the mean is still 39, remember, and our standard deviation is 0.3651. And we're still trying to see if the mean of those 30 kids will be between 38 and 40. Notice the standard deviation is much, much smaller. So the spread is not going to be as wide. And if we click compute, notice that almost the entire thing is covered. So there's a 99% chance that their mean weight of 30 kids would be between 38 and 40, right? So that's the idea, that's the difference, right? One person, they might not be exactly between 38 and 40, right? It might be a really skinny, skinny kid, or a really tall kid, or a really short kid. And then um, we could, but the average height's gonna be between, somewhere between that, right? Because that's, the mean should be 39. All right, let's keep going. These are so much fun, right? So it's exactly what we've been doing. Just a little bit different, right? Okay, so based on a recent study, the population mean, ooh, population mean and standard deviation for the GPA of all non-traditional students is 3.5. So our mean is 3.5, and the population standard deviation is 0.5. Suppose that a random sample of 100 non-traditional students is selected, so we have 100 students. Whoops. Identify the population and variable of interest. So the population are the non-traditional students. And our variable of interest would be their GPA. 
we want to find the mean and standard deviation of all possible sample means. So the mean of the sample means, that is mu of x bar, which we just said we have to have one of two things, a normal distribution or a large enough sample size. And what do we have? Well, it doesn't say anything about being normally distributed, but we have a sample size of 100, so definitely greater than 30. So our mean of all those sample means would be 3.5. Our standard deviation of all those sample means would be 0.5 divided by the square root of 100, and 0.5 divided by square root of 100 is 0.05. So notice our standard deviation is getting much smaller, right? So if we have 100 students, their average should be right at 3.5. Now we want to find the probability that the sample mean of 100 non-traditional students, so the, the probability of the mean, so x bar, is greater than 3.8. Because we're looking at x bar and the mean, we have to use 3.5 and 0.05. I'm going to keep it this time. Thank you. All right, so this time it's 3.5 and 0 0.05. We're doing our standard because it's just looking for greater than and greater than 3.8. So 3.8. Let's see. Oh, look at that. So I get 9.8659E negative 10. I don't even see any red on this where it would indicate that it's being colored, right? So what does that mean? Well, E to the negative 10 is in scientific notation. And that means we're going to move that decimal over 10 places to the left. And even if you hover over it, do you read it? Probability, a number between 0 and 1. So if you put 9.8659, that is a wrong number, right? Because that's can't have a probability greater than 1. So actually, if we move that decimal over 10 places, it would be 0 0.00000000098659. And rounded to four decimals, that would be equal to 0. So the probability that it would be greater than mm -hmm, 3.8 would be 0. Let's do one more. The per capita consumption of coffee by people in the U.S. in a recent study had a mean of 24.2. So there is our mean, 24.2. Standard deviation of 8.1. So standard deviation is 8.1. What is the probability that 45 people select at random drink more than an average? Hey, that's the same thing as a mean of 30 gallons of coffee that year. So there's 45 people. And we're trying to find the probability that the average is more than 30 gallons. Okay, so that means we have to find mu of x bar and sigma of x bar. Mu of x bar, let's see, do we have a normal distribution? I don't know. I don't see it. So we don't know, but we do have a large enough sample size. So that means that our mu of x bar will equal mu. Sigma of x bar, I love my happy little cup of coffee. Coffee does make me happy. It's 8.1 divided by the square root of n, and in this case, n is 45. That's how many people we're selecting. So here we go. I get my handy-dandy calculator, 8.1 divided by the square root of 45, making sure I do it all at one time so I get the proper number, which is 1.2075. You know, and I would highly suggest you, suggest rather, that um, if you're going to do this, um, get your calculator out. Always check to see if you get the same number as I do. Um, because a lot of people just don't know how to work their calculators because they haven't done this in a while, right? You haven't messed with these kind of numbers before in a while. So we forget, you know, the little things about our calculators that we have to have. So anyway, so there we go. Now we're ready to find the probability. I'm going to go to StatCrunch. I'm going to keep these this time. Here we go. So our mean, I wrote it down, um, is 24.2. Our standard deviation I just found was 1.2075, rounded to four decimals. And this is what I forgot to write. Aha, 30, greater than 30. So more than 30. Click compute and basically rounded to four decimals again. Zero, right, so it's at zero again. Mm -hmm. All right, and that is our probability. Now we can find probability for any kind of sampling dis 
sampling distribution. It doesn't matter if it's normal or not. Back in our previous chapters, it had to be normal. So this is great. All right. That is all of what you need to know. See you soon.